thinking about having more than a decade in one franchise, all Halo all the time, to throw that all away and start over from scratch was scary, but also really exciting. When Mike and I work together, we sort of come up with things that are somewhat similar based on what we've done in the past. But for Destiny, we knew that it was gonna be just this solar system. And then the idea that there would also be sort of a fantasy element along with it meant that I could have those things as a basis to start. Any, anything that is just classic magic forest music. All the sort of nice and I came up with that, which hopefully you'll hear a few times someplace. And also that, I hate to be this obvious, but you could sing the words destiny to that, so anyway. And then first theme comes in here. give away too much. When it comes to doing specific themes for characters or races or planets, that starts to go a little bit towards the Peter and the Wolf approach, which is completely legitimate, but I tend to shy away from that a little bit. But it still ends up showing up every once in a while. There ended up being sort of a Cortana theme and a Master Chief kind of theme, and then I took advantage of it. I'm hoping the same sort of organic, happy stuff happens on Destiny. C. That's, that's all that is. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, I want piece number one to start in C. And here's something. I'm hinting at the, the mode, which is Lydian with the flat seven. And I'm just sort of improvising. Number one, it was a separation from the sort of more heavily Dorian feel of a lot of the Halo music. And by the way, Mike, Mike has no idea that's what I'm doing. So a lot of times I'll just say, here's some, here's some music, or here's some themes, like see what you can do with that. So he could care less about modes. And, but 10 days before we were bought by Microsoft, I joined Bungie full time. But Mike and I were still, had been partners since 83 or 82 or whatever, whatever, yeah. And then about two years ago, I came and, and, and took up residence across the hall here. <laughs> so I could keep an eye on him. Yeah. I write the good ones, oh. and he writes <laughs> the kind of like throwaway ones. Yeah, yeah. I See, I have my own version of that. Of course uh, he does. <laughs> I, think, I think I make uh, Marty's music more accessible. I think he makes mine more interesting. Oh, that's an interesting way to put it. Yeah. The interesting thing is that we were both in rock bands, rival rock bands back in our teenage days. But when I went to get a master's degree in music, I was very serious about music, and so I didn't say anything. You had a look. It's okay. And I'll tend to use book learning, and he'll always question it. Yeah, I don't care what it says in the book. It doesn't sound as good as something he plays on guitar or whatever. And he's almost always right. When we bounce stuff off each other, I think what we end up coming up with at the end is better than we would have had if we had done it alone. I can verify that by the success of all the video games I've scored by myself. <laughs> <laughs> Could be the game, but well, I'm not going to say anything about that. The games were a little smaller. Okay. Like if you hear piano, that's usually me, but there are other really f popular piano things that weren't me, they were Mike. And Mike, I, he's told me this, so I'm not sure if it's true, but sometimes he's like, what would Marty do? So he goes to the piano and he does something, and I'm like, doggone it, I would have done that. <laughs> But then, and Mike tends to be sort of the big <laughs> percussion guy and good solid rock feels and every once in a while you'll hear something and actually I did that. Yeah, you're in my house, man. <laughs> <laughs> Our longtime partner in LA, a guy named Lev Chapelsky, he came up with the idea of collaborating with somebody new. He says, what do you think about Paul McCartney? And I'm like, well, yeah. Most of what I first showed to Paul was some tracks from Reach and he was completely on board with trying something he's never tried before and he wanted to do it. He actually really wanted to collaborate. He, he said something like, take some of my some of my bits of melodies and combine it with your spooky music and it becomes our music. You have to pinch myself. You get these, you, he'd send us bit, you know, bits of uh, music that he was working on and, and I'm sitting there thinking, well, we can use this and we can do this and we can put this there and stuff like that. And then I have to step back and say, wow, I'm actually editing Paul McCartney. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm like deciding which of his ideas are good and which ones aren't and stuff like that. Not that they weren't, they were all wonderful. All yes, spectacular. all 100%, they were great. <laughs> wow, it was, what a, what a moment, you know, for me. When we were in New York, the guy who was engineering for us, uh, sort of producing that particular session in New York was Giles Martin, who's George Martin's son. 
for about 45 minutes, there was a period where he just riffed on George and things they tried in the studio. And he was going to the mixing console and showing us what they would do. And, and we were just like, oh my God, we're getting a, a lesson on the, like from one of the Beatles right now on how they recorded. I think he was talking about revolvers. Yeah, yeah. And, and we were like, I didn't even want to move. I didn't want to break the moment. I didn't want to say anything because you just want to let it flow. Really amazing. That was fun. Yeah. I'd rather have it just be that people listen to the whole. They can sort of make up their own minds about what they think is Paul and what is Mike and what is me. And if they figure it out, I'll, they'll give them a prize, but I don't think they will.